This is Gary Guyman with the Dominate the Day podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you get 1% better in your business, provide clarity, and give you some ideas that will help you grow your business. If you're ready to dominate the day, let's go. Dominate the day. That's what we're about to do. If you don't want to dominate, then this podcast ain't for you. But if you are, then keep listening. Because every single damn day, the mission is, it's to dominate. You already know. We're here to dominate the day. So if you want to dominate every day, then let's go. It's time to grow. This is another episode of Dominate the Day. What's going on, Dominate the Nation? It's that time. It's that time, Dominate Nation. It's time to dominate the day and um it's the last episode of the uh, construction and leadership podcast clips that we're playing this is number seven and i uh, can't wait for you to uh take a listen and um get some value out of it so you can dominate the day let's go i want to ask you about about coaching are there yeah. are there principles from coaching in sports that you said I either learned the hard way or a mentor taught me about coaching people in athletic fields or courts, et cetera, that I apply in business that I know work extremely well. And you just referred to one of my believe, which is hire for strength. And, you know, if you're a really good shooter and you're, you know, you're really good on defense, but you're not a good rebounder, figure out how to get Dennis Rodman. Like, how do you do that and build a team that way? That one came right about of hiring for strength and then filling in slots where you're weak. Are there other principles that come to mind for you that you're like, hey, business and sports, same exact principle from a coaching perspective for you as a leader? Yeah, well, number one is communication. We uh, we, we had different ways to communicate plays or sets, you know, um, either hand signals or um, just gestures, whatever it may be, but it goes back to well, being consistent in your communication. So, yep. so communicating the same way, but also making sure they understand what the communication is. I, I have one kid that played for me, solid athlete. In fact, he played, uh, he didn't play college basketball, but he played college baseball. Okay. And, um, he's just a solid athlete. You could tell him, Hey, go get a bucket. He'd go get a bucket. Hey, shut this guy down. He'd shut this guy down. But if we ran a set for him or a play for him, four kids on the floor would know the play and he wouldn't. So you'd have, hey, go here, go go do that, and he'd have to remember, oh yeah, 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 I'm supposed to go there. Yeah. Uh, but he was a great athlete, and so always was like when we would put plays or sets in, how are we going to communicate this to him so he'll remember? What's the ways that he's going to remember? And would get the whole team involved to say, hey, we're going to help him be successful. And and you know, I think there's a little bit of that you can bring to. Uh, your company and and your staff in that, okay, when someone doesn't always remember the exact process, like we're not here to beat them down. We're not here to kick them off the team. We're here. Hey, don't, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Uh, if you need assistance with that, just let me know. Having, having people that are there to support the entire team is, is really important. And when you build that team methodology, with your communication, that should stick through. And the other thing that um, was really important for me to learn, and I coached in between two entrepreneurial sessions, I guess, for myself. You know, I had about a 12-year period where I owned a business, and then I had about six years where I didn't. I coached during that. Okay. Uh, I worked for another company, and then I was a paraprofessional at a high school coaching. And then after coaching, then I started my second entrepreneur path, basically. And that break in between taught me the communication, the consistent communication with your team. And I think helped me become a better leader and seeing people's strengths and weaknesses for sure and how to how to build off of them. And then uh, planning. Planning was huge. You know, you in basketball, you call it scouting. Uh, you go and you scout the other team. You figure out what their strengths and weaknesses are. And then you figure out how to use your team to offset those strengths and weaknesses and find mismatches to be able to win the game. Mm -hmm. And that planning piece was always critical. It, it was always critical. And um, it was unfortunate because based, I was on two different staffs and I was on one staff where there was really, there were people that were really good at scouting and I learned a lot from them. And I was on another staff where it was like Mr. Magoo went to scout 
and uh, you start playing a game. It's like, this is nothing like we expected. <laughs> um, you know, you're pressing, and uh, they can pass over top, and they're getting layups. So you're like, okay. Or you're playing two, three zone, and they got three guys just wide open shooting three. It's like, something's not right here. So you understood the idea of having a plan going into whatever it is you were doing. And in fact, the company that I worked for at that time was really big on preparation and planning as well. I mean, to the like off the chain good. Like we would have preps for a prep for a prep. Like you're prepping for this client. You'd have two meetings before that. Yeah. So you'd really prep for the client, you know, and it was a little over the top, but at the same time, it taught you the importance of understanding your communication, understanding your delivery, and then understanding how to take time, make it efficient and be successful with it. And, um, you know, I think if you can pull your team in to a place to be able to be prepared for the plan and be able then to execute that plan, then most of the issues that come along, you should be able to uh, kind of find those out before you actually start working that plan or that project. And um, being focused on that was really, really key. I think the other piece of it is, which is also a military thing, but it's also a team is that after activity report. So like you had, you had this briefing to start, or, you know, you talked about the game plan at the beginning of the game. And then at the end you break down, okay, here's what we did, right? Here's what we did wrong. And here's where we need to improve. And, that piece of it, businesses miss the most because we're on to the next project. We, we, we get something done. We add a new client. We do something. Boom. We get them to where they need to be. On to the next. We don't talk about, man, we probably should focus on this piece right here because if we improve just a little bit, we can make more money. We can be more efficient, like whatever that piece is. And being able to self-diagnose and um, understand what you did really well, what you didn't do really well, where to make, you know, where to make changes. That's, that's key. We, we had somebody today, a process that we've been using. I'm going to go like nine months pretty consistently. She said, I keep having to make these changes here and here. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I just made the changes to our process. So I don't have to go back and make the changes and it saves 15 minutes. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, but it took her having a, a conversation with us to say, Hey, where can we improve? And she's like, oh, we improve here and here. And we just save 15 minutes on a process that takes us about 10 hours. So, mm -hmm. I, so I saved, you know, a, a big chunk of time to me on just flipping two things in our process. And that's where if you have those after activity reports or those sessions afterwards to review, you can come up with information. And I didn't come up with it. She did. That's the whole idea. Like the people that are in the trenches doing the work coming back to you and saying, hey, this is what we could do right here. And it fixes this problem. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of folks will say, or will think these two ideas are mutually exclusive, which is speed of response, speed of action. Right. And you're saying mm -hmm. you got to plan adequately up front. If you do that, you can go really fast when you're in the game, but afterwards, yeah. slowing down a little bit to say, what did we do? Right. What did we do wrong? What can we learn? And I just have seen consistently, if you don't do that immediately, that's not part of the process. We played the game. Let's review the film. This idea of like this narrative fallacy, which is the further we get from what really happened in our minds are like, yeah, that didn't go really well, but we knew this and this and that. And all of a sudden we start naturally as human beings start explaining away some things where mm -hmm. This was an unknown. You couldn't forecast this. Gary said this, and I didn't understand that. It's nobody's fault, as opposed right. to saying, let's take a step back. What did we do great? What did we do okay? And how can we improve? I think that's that that idea of this after activity report, so underutilized, and I'm guilty of it as well. Yeah. And you know what? The pain is uh that if you do it right after you, you, you know, the pain, the grit, the, you know, everything that went into it, the emotion that went into it is still fresh. Yeah. You wait a couple of days, weeks, whatever. Eh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that painful. Like right. we could do that again, but if you do it immediately and you relive that and it's not always bad stuff either. It's, Hey, we did this really, really well. How do we do that again? Because we need to be at that level all the time, not an average level, but a really great level. And what can we do to make sure that happens? And I think 
Both of those pieces are equally important, not just focusing on the bad and the improvement, but like, man, we knocked that out of the park. Let's make sure we do that again. Yeah. Dominate the day. That's what we're about to do. If you don't want to dominate, then this podcast ain't for you. But if you are, then keep listening. Because every single damn day, the mission is, is to dominate. You already know. We're here to dominate the day. So if you want to dominate every day, then let's go. It's time to grow. This is another episode of Dominate the Day.